Hi everybody. So today I'm going to demonstrate two phenomena related to light. One is refraction of light, another is total internal reflection. So to support my demonstration, I have a glass which is almost filled with water. I have added one tablespoon of common salt NaCl to it to make the water more optically denser. I have a red laser light which is going to be the source of my light over here. Now we know that when I will switch on the laser light from here, the ray of light will be coming from laser into the air and from air it will touch this interface of water and air and then it will go inside the water. And we know that when light travels from one medium to the another, it bends from its original path which is known as refraction. So in this process, the speed of light also changes while passing from one medium to the another. So let me show you, this is the ray of light this is your incident ray, this is the normal, this is the expected path and you can see very clearly that the refracted ray is bending towards the normal. So you can check by yourself the bending is happening which is the proof for the refraction. Now in refraction the speed of light changes so here since the ray of light was traveling from air into the water its speed will decrease as it is going from rarer medium to the denser medium. To observe total internal reflection, I am going to shine the light from this end and total internal reflection only takes place when the ray of light travels from denser medium to the rarer medium and second condition is if its angle of incidence is more than the critical angle then the light would be staying inside the same medium. So here I am going to shine the laser light from here and you can check by yourself that the light ray does not escape out of the water. Now this incident ray does not escape out of the surface of water and stays in the same medium. Because the angle of incidence is more than the critical angle, here the surface behaves just like a plane mirror and does not allow light to escape out of the medium. So after seeing the demonstration, it's time to understand the theory portion as well. So refraction is basically when light travels from one medium to the another. During this process, the speed of light changes and it deviates from its original path, which is referred as refraction. So here, this is a ray of light, which is coming from this source, which is a laser. And this ray of light strikes the surface, which is separating both the mediums air and water. So mediums are basically the matter in which the ray of light travels. So here this is referred as incident ray. Now when it strikes the surface we need to highlight this point and this is called the point of incidence and from here we will draw a perpendicular line. This perpendicular line should be perpendicular to the surface and this is referred as normal. Right and this is referred as incident ray. Now the light should have gone in straight line but since there is a change in the medium the light travels in some different way. So this is a rarer medium and this is a denser medium. This is not the material density which we are talking about. We are talking about the optical density. So the optical density of water is more than the optical density of air. And that's why the refractive index of air is approximately 1. The refractive index of water is approximately 1.33. So more is the refractive index, more is the optical density. If you are not understanding this part, you can just check the link in the description and you will understand the whole part which we are discussing over here. So since the refractive index of water is more, it is referred as denser medium and the refractive index of air is less, it is rarer medium. So when ray of light travels from rarer medium into the denser medium, it will bend towards the normal. So instead of going straight, it bends towards the normal. So it instead of going straight, it will go towards the normal. This ray is called refracted ray. The angle between the incident ray and normal is referred as angle of incidence which is represented by small i. The angle between the normal and the refracted ray is represented by small r. It is called angle of refraction and this is the expected path of the light. But 
it goes in this direction so this angle is referred as angle of deviation represented by delta instead of going straight it is bending by this much angle so that is referred as angle of deviation now here the refractive index of the class this was case a this is case b in which a ray of light again from the laser light is traveling from glass into the air so the refractive index of glass is 1.5 refractive index of air is approximately 1 so since the refractive index of glass is more it is denser medium air turns out to be the rarer medium correct now what happens is this is again the point of incidence this is normal a perpendicular line to the surface this is surface which separates both the medium this is incident ray now this is the expected path but instead of going straight now this time since a ray of light is going from denser into the rarer it will bend away from the normal so instead of going like this it will bend away from the normal correct so the angle between the incident ray and normal is angle of incidence the angle between the normal and the refracted ray is represented by angle of refraction small r now this was the expected path now it is bending away by this much angle so it was expected to go in this direction but now it is going in this direction so this is called angle of deviation delta now once again we must look at these two cases since a ray of light is going from rarer to denser it is bending towards normal and of course the speed of light decreases when it enters into denser medium here the ray bends away from the normal the speed of light increases compared to the glass so whatever is the speed of light in the glass compared to that the speed of light will increase over here here the angle of incidence is less sorry it is more and angle of refraction is less here angle of incidence is less and angle of refraction would be more right now irrespective of the about two cases if a ray of light falls directly perpendicular to the surface no matter the light comes from whichsoever medium denser to rarer or rarer to denser but if it strikes perpendicular to the surface again this is point of incidence the normal coincides with the incident ray under this situation the angle of incidence is zero so as per the Snell's law angle of refraction must also be zero if you don't understand what is Snell's law the link is given in the description you may check that for better understanding so here the angle is always between the ray and the normal but here since the ray is on the normal so the angle of incidence is zero so angle of refraction is zero so the refracted ray also is on the normal no deviation takes place but definitely since the ray of light is traveling from denser to rarer the optical the refractive index is 1.5 refractive index is 1.33 so this is denser medium this is rarer medium so denser to rarer the speed increases but obviously so the speed will change but the deviation does not take place very special case case c if a ray of light strikes perpendicular to the surface no deviation takes place it goes in a straight line but the speed changes had it been water to glass then the speed would have been increased correct so these are some basic facts about refraction more about refraction you may check the links in the description and you will get the idea now you also must learn about the effects of refraction that are discussed as follows now talking about the total internal reflection people let's understand that what is total internal reflection so for total internal reflection there are two conditions condition number one and very very important the source of light must be in the denser medium so here we have a bulb which is placed in the water so this whole part between these two lines this whole part is water and the ray of light must go in the rarer medium so here the ray of light travels from water into the air so from denser medium to rarer medium because the refractive index is 1.33 is approximately 1 so this is denser medium rarer medium again i am 
emphasizing that if a ray of light travels from rarer to denser medium you will never have any kind of total internal reflection so for that a ray of light must be in the denser medium and then it should travel into the rarer medium so here there are many rays of light which are in the rarer medium sorry denser medium and they are traveling out into the rarer medium okay fine so this is ray number 1 2 3 4 5 so since ray number 1 strikes perpendicular to the surface so as discussed in case c no refraction takes place i mean no deviation takes place it will travel in a straight line and it will go straight away outwards like this but since this ray is falling obliquely to the surface this is the surface which is separating air and water so at this point i must draw normal here also normal here also normal and here also normal you must understand that normals should be perpendicular to the surface correct now since this is your incident ray which is falling on the surface this is angle i1 let me call this as angle of incidence i2 angle of incidence i3 correct and as you can see that angle of incidence increases as we move from here to here correct you can see that this angle is less this angle is more this angle is more this angle is still more let me call this angle as i4 so angle of incidences are increasing here the angle of incidence was zero correct now the ray expected path is shown by the dotted lines but since a ray of light is going from denser to rarer it will bend away from the normal so it will bend away from the normal like this it will bend more away from the normal as per Snell's law if angle of incidence increases the angle of refraction also increases guys so you must look at the Snell's law lecture which is whose link is given in the description so guys please watch that video before seeing this topic right so here we know that this is your refracted ray and this is normal so this angle is angle of refraction r1 normal and the refracted ray angle of refraction r2 since the angle of incidence increases angle of refraction also increases so the ray becomes more and more closer to the surface so at one angle this at this particular angle the ray will be parallel to the surface because here since more than this angle is more than this so this angle of refraction should be more than this so at this particular angle the refracted ray becomes parallel to the surface and as you can see that the refracted angle r3 is 90 degree this angle guys is called critical angle and it is represented by c now if you incident any ray more than the critical angle the refraction does not take place simply refraction take place and the surface behaves like a plane mirror so this surface behaves like a plane mirror and at the same angle the light reflects back into the same medium so if any ray strikes the surface with more than the critical angle because here this angle of incidence i4 is more than critical angle then no refraction takes place the ray does not go out of the surface the surface just behaves like a plane mirror and throws back the light in the same medium this is called total internal reflection so i must stress that here here the refraction ends the refraction was still here this is the last part where the refraction takes place and the ray is going out of the medium but after increasing the angle even by a smaller amount you will see that the reflected ray the ray would be reflected back into the same medium so since this is the last part of the refraction so i may apply the snell's law over here but i can't apply the snell's law beyond this so i'm going to apply the snell's law over here and let me call the refractive index of the water which i know is 1.33 as mu w 
and the refractive index of air is 1. So we know that how to apply Snell's law. So Snell's law is 1 into sin 90. So 1 into sin 90 that is equal to 1.33 into sin i3 or sin c because i3 and c are equal. So 1.33 into sin c. Instead of this, I had written mu w, but that's totally fine. So 1 into sin 90 is again 1, which is equal to mu w into sin c. So 1 into 1 is 1, that is equal to mu w into sin c, sin of the critical angle. So this mu w goes down. So 1 upon mu w is equal to sin c. So 1 upon 1.33 is equal to sin c. From here, c can be written as sin inverse 1 upon 1 1.33 and if you check this value, you will get approximately this angle as 48 degree. Here, this c, this was the refractive index of water. So, if you were to take this medium as glass, then here this value would be 1.5 and this would be critical angle would be approximately 42 degree. So critical angle is a characteristic of the medium, right?